Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing the Bonferroni correction and the home method after ANOVA using Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have in this worksheet fictitious data that I'll be using for this example, and I'm going to be conducting a one-way ANOVA here. So I have this one independent variable named treatment, and it has three levels, rational mode behavior therapy, family therapy, and treatment as usual. And after we get the results of the ANOVA, I'll be performing two different types of post hoc test. One is the Bonferroni correction, and the other is the home method, sometimes referred to as the home Bonferroni method. I'm demonstrating both of these methods here at the same time to draw an important distinction between how they operate. So first let's take a look at the results of ANOVA. We're going to perform the ANOVA. So we have these three levels of the independent variable treatment. RABT, family, and treatment as usual. All of these scores would come from the same instrument. And let's say that this measure, these scores come from a psychometric instrument designed to measure depression. So we're looking here at depression levels. So we have RABT, rational mode behavior therapy, which is a treatment. We have family therapy, which is a treatment. And then we have whatever treatment was already in place when we started the study, treatment as usual. So we want to see if there are statistically significant differences between these groups. And we'll first start with ANOVA as we start to try to figure this out. So I'm going to go to data and data analysis and use analysis tools here to perform one-way ANOVA. So we'll move up to the top and I'm looking here for ANOVA single factor. That's the same thing as one way, just one factor, one independent variable named treatment. So I click OK and for the input range I'm going to use cell A1 all the way down through cell C31. So I'm going to include the labels and all the values from the psychometric instrument designed to measure depression, the dependent variable. This information is grouped by columns, so I'm going to leave that as it is. I do have the labels in the first row. And notice here that the default alpha value is 0.05 or 5%. I'm going to stay with that alpha value. For output range, I'm going to move up here and select cell F2, then click OK. So I have this summary up top, so I can see that I have different counts, a different sample size for each of the levels of the independent variable treatment. I have the sum, the average, and the variance for these groups as well. Moving down to ANOVA, for source of variation I have between groups and within groups. And if I move here to the right, we can see we have a statistically significant p-value. The p-value is 0 0.003. That is below the alpha of 0 0.05. So we would, we would reject the null hypothesis. We would say there is a difference between the groups, a difference somewhere. Now, this ANOVA won't tell us where that difference is. If we go back to these original groups, these different levels, that difference could be between REBT and family, REBT and treatment as usual, or family and treatment as usual. We know there's a difference somewhere, and there could be differences between two or even three of the pairwise comparisons. We just don't know where those differences are without a post hoc test. So down here, I have every possible pairwise comparison already in this table. Now for just three levels of one independent variable, we only have three combinations. We have REBT family, family treatment as usual, and treatment as usual REBT, as I've already mentioned. So we're going to run a t-test across all three of these pairwise comparisons. So this will be three probability values. Three t-tests will give us three probability values. So here in cell H19, I'm going to perform the first t-test. 
So I hit equal sign and press T, and you can see there's a lot of functions that have the letter T. You have T distribution, T distribution two tailed, the inverse of the T distribution. I'm looking for T dot test. This is a T test. And here in T test, you have four arguments, array one, array two, tails, and type. So if I look here at this pairwise comparison, this is rational mode behavior therapy versus family. So array one is going to be the score set for REBT. So all the depression scores associated with that REBT level. So I'll select all those scores here, then comma, and array two will be all the family scores. Select those. Then we have tails. This is the third argument in this t-test function. I have a choice here between two options, a one-tailed distribution or a two-tailed distribution. In this instance, I want a two-tailed distribution. So I'll select two-tailed, then comma, and now I have three options here under type. Paired, two-sample equal variance, homoscedastic, or two-sample unequal variance, heteroscedastic. Well, we know these are independent samples. We have three groups and a participant can't be a member of more than one group. So this is an independent samples t-test, not a dependent samples t-test. So we know it's going to be between option two and option three. Either we have equal variance, homogeneity of variance, or we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. It has to be one of these two options. Here I'm going to assume that we have equal variance. Typically to determine if you're working with scores that have homogeneity of variance, you would perform a Levine's test. And a Levine's test, the output of Levine's test, is a p-value, just like ANOVA. And we evaluate that p-value against an alpha of 0.05. In a Levine's test, if the p-value is less than 0.05, you would reject the null hypothesis and you assume that you have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So in that instance, we would select two sample unequal variance. If we had a p-value greater than 0.05, we'd fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we'd assume that we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And that's what I'm doing here by selecting two sample equal variance. I'm assuming that we have homogeneity of variances. So I'll close that parenthesis, and that gives us a p-value with the, this t-test of 0.327. Now I'm going to autofill this down. It's going to give me the wrong result, but I'm just going to autofill to save time. I'll make adjustments to these cells. So here, for the second t-test, we want family and treatment as usual. So I'll move up here to the function bar. I can see that I'm close. I have the family just off by one, so I'll just select that range. Already has the rows correct, number of rows correct. And then I want treatment as usual, so I'll move this selection over to treatment as usual and just scroll down, make sure I do have all of the values included. Now you can see I've selected two extra cells, C27. C28, just because it's easier, it doesn't make any difference in the calculation. These cells are empty. You could select the whole column and it wouldn't make a difference in this calculation. So I'll just click enter and now I have the correct t-test result for family versus treatment as usual. And I'll go to this last probability value. And again, we're looking here at treatment as usual versus REBT. So I need to move this selection up for REBT. Make sure that's in and then move this selection from family over to treatment as usual. Again, make sure we have all the values included and click enter and we get a p-value here of 0 0.001. So what we need to do for a Bonferroni correction is we need to take the alpha that we're using and divide it by the number of levels of the independent variable. In this case, because I have REBT, family and treatment as usual, I have three levels. 
So it's important to recognize here that I'm not talking about the degrees of freedom between. This isn't the number of levels minus 1, k minus 1. This is the number of levels. So it's, it's 3, not 2, because I do have 3 levels. So to calculate the new alpha with the Bonferroni correction, I'm going to use another cell up here, uh, k9, uh, and I'm going to type in the alpha. I know the alpha here is 0 0.05. I'm just going to put that in that cell. Makes it a little easier to reference the cell instead of typing 0 0.05 over and over. So here for the Bonferroni correction, this will be equal sign that alpha value in cell K9. I'm going to divide this by the number of levels, and that's 3. So this gives me an adjusted alpha, 0 0.017. So instead of using 0 0.05, I'm using 0 0.017. Now in this function, I can use the function 4 key. So I'll select K9 and press function 4, F4. I can make that an absolute reference so I can autofill this down. and It'll be correct without me having to make any additional changes. So we have this new alpha value, and what we would do here is compare the t-test of the pairwise comparison to this new alpha value. So in this instance, for REBT versus family, we can see that our probability value from the t-test is greater than this new alpha value. 0.327 is greater than 0.017. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we assume there's no difference between these groups, REBT and family, no difference between them. Moving to family and treatment as usual, we have a probability value here of 0 0.02. And when we compare this to this alpha here under the Bonferroni correction, we see that again, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. We would say there's no difference between these two groups. The only difference we have here using the Bonferroni correction is treatment as usual in REBT. This is statistically significant at 0 0.001. So before, using the same fictitious data, I performed a Tukey test. This is an earlier video. And I know from those results that there is actually a difference between the family and treatment as usual levels and of course the treatment as usual in REBT levels. Now, I use different labels for the levels with the same fictitious data. So I know there are differences here and no difference for this top comparison, REBT and family. And this highlights a problem with the Bonferroni correction. It's too conservative. It protects against type 1 error inflation, but it overprotects against type 1 error. So a type 1 error is when you reject a null hypothesis that's actually true. So you say there's a difference between two groups, and there is no difference. You find that a treatment was more effective than another treatment when it really wasn't. That's a type 1 error. The Bonferroni correction overprotects against that type of error and increases the probability of a type 2 error, which is where you would look at two groups and say there is no difference between the groups, but there actually is a difference. And that's what happened here between family and treatment as usual. So this is problematic. And one way we can address this issue is to use the home method instead of the Bonferroni correction. And it's not too difficult from this point to use the home method instead. It just takes a few additional calculations, and I'll show you how to do that. So first we need to determine this rank value. So this rank value for this column rank is going to be based on the t-test results. And we want to rank the t-test results, the probability values, from 1 to n in this case 1 to 3, however many levels we have, in ascending order of size. 
So we're going to move from the most statistically significant result to the least statistically significant result. And we're simply going to put that rank into this rank variable. Now here we only have the three values. And we can tell here that the most statistically significant is the 0 0.001. So I'm just going to put one there for that rank. I can see that the difference between family and treatment as usual, the p-value associated with those scores, would be the next level, so that's 2, and then REBT versus family, that's rank 3. So we have this rank variable, and now we can move to the home method. And the formula here is fairly straightforward. This will be equal sign. I'm going to select cell K9, which contains the alpha value, so 0 0.05. And then I'm going to press function 4 to make that an absolute reference. So it's the alpha divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses. This is going to be the number of levels, so 3. Then I'm going to subtract the rank. And that's, in this case here, is 3, cell J19, and then add 1. So it's going to be the number of levels minus the rank plus 1. That's the denominator for this formula. Close parentheses and hit enter. And we can see that in this case, for REBT and family with this probability value, the alpha that we'll be using is the same as the one we were originally going to use. So it's going to be 5% for this particular comparison because of this p-value, because of the rank. So that'll be 5%. And I can autofill this down to get the other adjusted alpha values. So you can see for the second comparison, family and treatment as usual, we're using an adjusted alpha, point. 025. And then for the third comparison, we're using 0 0.016 repeating, which is going to be the same here as what we had for the bone Ferroni correction, 0 0.017. So notice the home method adjusts the alpha in a different way. Instead of the same alpha applied to each pairwise comparison, you get a different alpha value. And this is less conservative. This is a better balance between the probability of making a type 1 error and the probability of making a type 2 error. So with the home method, we would still reject the null hypothesis for REBT and family. We get the same result because we're using an alpha of 0 0.05 and 0 0.327 is greater than 0 0.05. We still get the same result for treatment as usual versus REBT, we're using the same alpha here, 0 0.017. So we still reject the null hypothesis here. We say there is a difference between these two groups. The change would be for family and treatment as usual. Under the Bonferroni correction, we had 0 0.002, so we failed to reject. Here with the home method, the alpha is 0 0.025. So the probability value from the t-test is less than the alpha with the home method. So we would reject the null hypothesis and say there is a statistically significant difference between the family and treatment as usual depression scores. So how you want to balance the risk of a type 1 error against a type 2 error will determine which post hoc test you choose. I've illustrated differences here between the home method and the Bonferroni correction. The Bonferroni correction is more conservative than the home method, and both are fairly straightforward to calculate using Excel. I hope you found this video on conducting the Bonferroni correction and the home method in Excel to be useful. Thanks for watching.